How great thou art. Powerful song. Thank you, Sister D. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless his holy name this morning. I can move this, right? O my soul, and forget all of his benefits. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to say that there are some benefits in knowing our creator, for he woke me up this morning like he woke you up this morning, and he has started you on your way. For he woke you up this morning, he has awakened me up this morning, and he put breath into my body this morning. I just want to praise God this morning. How about you? And see, I know that you were on your way to uh, Katie Seven Days Venice Church this morning, and uh, you were not in an accident this morning. So we have something to praise God about. We have went to our jobs uh, this week, uh, Monday, and today is restful, blessed um, Saturday, Sabbath, we call it. It's our Sabbath day, and we are here safe. Our families are safe. And so I just want to praise our Father, for he's the King of kings, and he's the Lord of lords, for he's our high priest, for he's our rock, oh, he's our fortress this morning. And I just want to say hallelujah to our Father this morning. I just want to praise you, Daddy, for who you are. I just want to praise him. I want to bless his mighty name this morning. I want to give him all the glory. See, something about me, I like to praise. I'm a praise and worshiper. I like to praise him. How about you? Amen. Hallelujah, this morning. I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. And so we're in the house of the Lord this morning. I am glad to be in the Lord's house. Do you know that the Lord is here with us this morning. How many know that God is here with us this morning? He is here with us this morning. How many know that this morning? Praise him this morning. And so I would just like to thank, before I get started, uh, Sister Vidya. And I called her Vivian and everything else, but Vidya, I think I got it right, Sister Vidya. I want to thank her for inviting me uh, to bring the word today. Uh, I would like to thank your pastor, Swoops. I know he is not here. I think he has two or three churches that he's pastoring. I know at least two, uh, because when you become a seven-day Adventist uh, pastor, that's what happens to you. You don't just have one church. They give you two and three churches. And so I know he's not here, but I want you to know that you have a powerful pastor. And, and as I listen to him, he's a young man, but he uh, uh, has wisdom beyond his years. I want you to know that. And so um, I just want to praise God this morning. And I just want to go into a prayer this morning just before we get started. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy powerful and most gracious and loving Father. For we come, Lord, once again to say thank you, Jesus, for who you are. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your presence in this room. For we know that you're here with us, Lord. For I thank you, Lord, for bringing us, Lord, back, Lord, together, Lord, on this Sabbath day, Father. For each and one of us are here this morning, Lord, in our right minds. For we thank you, Jesus. Lord, we ask, Lord, as I bring the word of, 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 of Jesus this morning, Lord, I ask, Lord, that the words, Lord, go up, Lord, uh, as sweet, sweet, sweet-smelling incense to the throne of God this morning. For I know that you are in the most uh, holiest place this morning in the sanctuary. And I know that, Lord, that you are, uh, are interceding, Lord, on our behalf, Lord, on my behalf this morning. And, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you go before me. It's not a concern of who I am, but Lord, you have sent me, Father. And so, Lord, I thank you this morning, Father, for 
for sending me to Katie Seven Day Adventist Church. Lord, I ask that you hide me, Lord, behind the cross of Calvary this morning. But Lord, I ask, Lord, that my cup this morning be empty. I ask that you empty me of Carmen this morning, Father God, so that you can dwell, Father, on the inside out and the outside in. Lord, I praise you for what you're going to do. Lord, I ask for the outpouring, Lord, of the Holy Spirit in this place, Lord, for I ask for the latter rain this morning, Father. But, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for being with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And anything that we have done or said, Lord, that is not pleasing to you this morning, Father, we ask for forgiveness. And so I am aware that it is it's not even early morning. It's actually afternoon. But I want you to know that uh, I was sure to be not long but I'm going to be strong, all right? Amen. I'm trying to get this mic adjusted. To, let, me, let me move some things here just a minute. This may be better. Oh, that's better. I like that better. Okay. Amen. We got it. Can you hear me pretty well? Okay. I just want to ask this morning how many of you are faced with a battle today? I want to ask you how many of you are faced with a battle today? See, when I looked up the word battle in the Webster's uh, dictionary, it says that battle is a physical dispute between opposing individuals or groups a fight, a war, some type of conflict uh, that some of us might be having uh, uh, with one another. Fight means two or more fighting for what they believe in. Opposition means there is a difference between two sides. And that is what I got from Webster, that a battle, uh, uh, when I look at it, it's, a, it's actually a battle uh, to me between good and evil. And so um, I just want to ask, what is your battle uh, this morning? And I know some battles might be, some of us uh, ladies, uh, we're, we're, we're always trying to lose weight. So one of your battles might be just uh, trying to lose weight. Uh, you've taken every diet pill, You've, you've been on Jenny Craig, you've taken every pill, you've, done every, you've taken every drink that uh, came on the television, uh, you might have tried to, maybe it's a job situation, maybe you've been trying to get a raise on your job and that raise just, just haven't come through for you yet. Maybe somebody is having a health issue that they are battling and maybe because maybe you're not eating a, a proper diet, some one didn't get accepted. I see some young folk in the audience, and, and, and I know there is even uh, some older people begin to go to college, and maybe someone didn't get accepted to college of their choice. Maybe they uh, wrote letters here and there, and maybe they have gotten their letter, but maybe it wasn't the college that they wanted to go to. Just maybe, uh, the, the, maybe there was not enough money for tuition. Uh, someone just don't like you. Maybe on your job, you have tried so hard to be liked by your, your, your managers, and, and maybe it's a neighbor who have just been giving you trouble and problems. Maybe it's a sister or a brother. I don't know, but maybe they just don't like you. And the good news today, this morning, is that we serve a high priest that will fight all your battles. So I don't care what you might be going through. We serve a high priest who can fight all of your battles. You hear me this morning, sisters and brothers. We serve a high priest, one who sit in the most holy place, the one who is the king of kings and the lord of lords, for he can fight all of our battles. I don't care what it looked like. He can fight our battles. And I'm just going to start with my title today. My title is The Power of a Praying Church. My title is The Power of a Praying Church. For the battle 
is not yours. For the battle is not yours. For the battle is not yours. For the battle is not mine. For the battle is not mine. And so I thought of that title with you in mind this morning. See, I'm not referring to the beautiful building. This is a beautiful building, but I'm not referring to the beautiful building, but I'm referring to the people who are sitting in the audience. The building is a place for worship, but we are the church. I'm the church. You all are the church. And so what I want us to do this morning is I'm going to say, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. The, I'm going to say the power of a praying church for the battle is not yours. And we're going to substitute our name. And I'm going to give an example. The power of a praying Carmen for the battle is not mine. And so you ready? The power, and what you're going to do is you're going to use your name in place of church. Is that Okay. The power of a praying, the power of a praying, okay, I don't think Sister Vidalia told y'all, but I was a school teacher for 15 years and a counselor in the public school system, so we're going to get it right. <laughs> the power of a praying Carmen for the battle is not yours, amen. How many know that God has never, how many know that God has never, never lost a battle? How many know that? God has never lost a battle. And he is a God that he can never lie. And he might not come when you want him, <laughs> but he's always on time. And so we're going to go with me, please, to 2 Chronicles 20, 1 and 6. 2 Chronicles 1 and 6. It says, and it came to pass, let me wait, everybody there. Say amen if you have it. And 2 Chronicles 20, 1 and 6 says, it came to pass. After this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from above the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in I, Zizan, Tamar, which is in Gita. And maybe I'm not pronouncing that correctly, because I don't want to mess it up. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Ju Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, Art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathens? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand it. And so I notice that the people of Judah who were obedient was facing trouble. The enemy was coming up against the people of Judah. See, people of Judah, they are people who love the Lord. They love the Lord with all their heart. They were coming up against Jehoshaphat, who was the king of Judah. And see, if you don't know, see, 
Jehoshaphat had a very powerful lineage. He was the great, 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 great grandson, the fourth great grandson of King David. See, David is the one who, who took the slingshot. And, and what he did was he uh, took the slingshot and, and he uh, killed the, the giant, or Goliath. You remember that? And so he is of that lineage. And so he was chosen to rule throughout the land of Israel. David was a man after God's own heart. So you know that the seed in which Jehoshaphat came was very powerful and anointed and appointed by God. They were going to destroy Jehoshaphat. See, the enemy wants to destroy us too. He wants to destroy you. He wants to sift you up like wheat. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how many titles you have before your name, after your name, what you don't have. The enemy wants to destroy us. We now call on the most high God because we are now in trouble. See, everything we have works so hard for the enemy wants to destroy us. As long as Satan can keep us focusing on our problems, as long as he can keep you focused on your problem, we can never focus on God because we're too busy focusing on our problem. And so I'm going to be transparent for just a moment. In 2005, my husband and I get architect plans to build what I named the house that the Lord has built. <laughs> you know about this house. Our dream house. How many of y'all have a dream? See, that's a big word for me, a dream. How many of you all have a dream? I have so many dreams. And everything that you have worked for so hard, the enemy tries to steal it. You know that the enemy comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. And he comes to steal our joy, our laughter. He comes to kill your dream. See, some of you out here have a vision. And so we know that Satan comes to destroy that vision that God has put on the inside of you. See, God has a purpose and a plan for all of us. And so maybe you have a desire to move up on your job, and every time you inquire, every time you go to your boss, every time you go to your manager, she or he creates a setback for you. Every time. You have desired to go to college, and every time you fill out your application and you get all your enrollment papers together, then you come up short of tuition. The enemy comes to steal your dreams. Little did I know that the battle was about to go down. The enemy wants to destroy us over our home. I'm not going to stand here and give you all the details. But see, the enemy can look like your so-called friends. The enemy can look like your so-called friends. It can look like your home association. And I know some of you all know about the home association. And the enemy can look like your neighbors. I'm talking about the neighbors that you plant flowers with or somebody that you go to and you talk to, but that same neighbor would turn on you. Like Jehoshaphat, we have to stand firm in Jesus. When we stand firm in God, he will fight our battles. We have to stand tall. 
We can't fall down like a chicken or a duck. We have to get up and fight. We have to stand resolved. We have to stand fearless. Let the enemy know that you will not go down with a fight. We got to stand confident knowing that God is fighting your battle. I did what Jehoshaphat did. I prayed. I began to pray. After calling on all my friends, after getting on the phone, calling on all of my associates, after getting on the phone, calling all of my lawyer friends and this person and that person, I said, Lord, what is it that you have me to do? He said, I need you to pray. He said, I need you to fast. And I need you to pray some more. And I need you to fast. And I need you to pray. And I began to fast. And I began to pray. And I began to go in my little closet. And I began to pray out to God. And Lord, what is it that you have me to do? Teach me. Give me wisdom in this situation. Give me knowledge, Lord, in this situation. And so 2 Chronicles 1 said, The Moabites and the Ammonites and the Moab and the others stood against Jehoshaphat. And like the Home Association and the others, like your friends, call themselves like they call themselves standing against you, standing against me. See, Jehoshaphat reminded himself that he was a descendant of King David who had favor with God. Jehoshaphat reminded himself that he was a descendant of the Most High God. I know that I am a descendant. I know that you are descendant, and also you, like me, have favor, because we too have the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so I know that we are descendants. You too have favor with God because you are and can be the sons of daughters of the Most High as he has promised us. So we have to take a stand like Jehoshaphat. We must fast, we must fast, we must pray, and we must claim the victory. See, I always say that we ask, we knock, and God said if we ask, he said if we believe and trust, smaller than a grain of a mustard seed, he said that we can move a mountain, and then we begin to claim the victory of Jesus. So God can bring us out of any situation that we have gotten ourselves into. Whatever situation that you have gotten yourself into, I want you to know this morning that God can see you through. The power of a praying church should be proactive and not reactive. See, we have to become proactive prayer warriors, not reactive. Prayer must become our daily bread. See, I call this the needy person prays consistently, only during a time of trouble. You ever know some folk like that? That the only time they pray is when there's a time of trouble. The only time they call the prayer warriors in the church is in a time of trouble. Any time they call the elders in the church is a time of trouble. The needy person prays consistently only in a time of trouble. They don't have a testimony but lives vicariously through someone else's praise report. You know somebody like that? I'm making it plain today, is that okay? A reactive state of mind individual will allow the enemy to persuade them right back into sin. See, we must be grounded and anchored in the Lord. 
When we are not, we can fall prey to temptation. Soon as God bless you, the needy person, they get right back into their lukewarmness. See, we got to get out of lukewarmness. We can't be nor cold nor hot for Jesus. We got to come out of the Laodicea. You can't be cold today. I'm on fire. I'm, I'm cold today and then tomorrow on fire. I'm coming to church. And so because I'm entering to the church building, it's Katie, Seven Adventist Church, I'm hot now because I'm in the mix of the church. But remember what we just said, that the church is me. The church is you. 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 And the church is you. So you are the church. So if there is a dead church, there are some dead bodies in the church. Then there's another group of set of people. I don't have time. I don't have time. We must make time to pray. According to Mark 135 says, Jesus arise early in the morning to pray. That's what Jesus did. And when he got up in the morning time before day to pray, he, got on, he went onto the battlefield. And before and after he prayed, he knew that everything was going to be okay. He knew that his prayers were answered. Because he had gotten up early in the morning to pray. And so I want to ask the question, how does our prayer life compare with Jesus? How does our prayer life compare with Jesus, the most high God? How consistent is your prayer life? How consistent is your prayer life? I am amazed of the many excuses people give me when I ask them, come on the prayer line at 6 o'clock a.m. And you know what their answer is? It's too early to come on the prayer line Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's too early for 6. And then the evening time is too late because you're tired from being at work all day. How distracted are you from praying? How much television are you watching? If you cut off, and I don't know what you watch, but if you cut off Atlanta Housewives, Jersey Housewives, CSI, NFI, whatever the name of it's called, Scandal, The haves and the have-nots. I'm talking to somebody today. The NBA and the NFL finals. We can do some sure enough praying up in here. You must move your cup. You must remove and deny yourself. We come to church but when we are here, we are empty. There are two ways. I want you to watch this. There are two ways to communicate with the Most High God. That is through praying and some more praying and some more praying, and some more praising, and some more praying, and some more praising. See, it's in your praise, if you didn't know it. Your breakthrough come through your praise, and it come through your prayer. I see you, sister, you know what I'm talking about. It come through your praise, and it come through your prayer. Sometimes we ask the question, why pray? 
What is in it for me? The necessity of prayer, of why pray? When we are faced with a battle, then God will give us the victory in the conflict. When we are faced with a battle, God will give us victory in the conflict. See, when they began to come up against me with my house, see, I called on everybody that I thought I could call on because I thought that they were important. But when I got on my face and began to cry out and begin to pray, then God said, now I can, I can work out your conflict in your praise, in your praying to me. See, prayer gives us a direct contact with God. So if you're not praying, how are you talking to God? How are you talking to him? How he know what it is that you want for him to do? He knows everything. He knew you before you were born, right? And so according to Ms. White, God desires us to come to him in prayer that he may enlighten our minds. He can give true conceptions of truth. He alone can soften and subdue the heart. He can establish the wavering mind and give it knowledge and faith that will endure the test. See, there was a test. And if you don't know it, and I'm not going to tell you all the story, but that was 2005 that they began to fight me over a house, the house that the Lord has built. It is 2013 today. And it is today, it was three weeks ago, that the judge uplifted the fight. It took eight years for God said to me, it's done and it's over. And in eight years, a lot of things happened to me in eight years. In eight years, I want you to know that I lost my babies. Anybody can have a baby. My husband's a GYN, but I lost my babies. In the same eight years, I almost lost my mind where I ended up in the hospital and didn't know who I was. Didn't know where I was. And the Lord said to me as I lay there, he said, and, and as I laid there, they brought me in. I called my girlfriend. I was driving along the highway, and, and I called Don, and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm faking. And at this time, I was still teaching school in public school. And something about you children, you all know when something is wrong. So you can't fake with young folk. You can't fake with them. And so I'm in the classroom, and I'm teaching, and my students said, is something wrong with you? I said, oh, no, I'm fine. They said, you're not looking right. But I went through that whole day. I finished at the course of the day. And as I finished at the course of the day, it got worse. Everything got bleary, I couldn't see. I didn't know really where I was. But I got in my car, because I've always been a bold person, and I, I pride myself on exercising and stuff like that. I do P90X every day. I jog two and three miles. And so I pride myself in being healthy. But a girlfriend called Don, and she called me, and she said, well, what are you doing? And, and I'm talking to her, and I'm trying to pretend with her like nothing is wrong. And so she said, what are you doing? And I'm talking to her. And all of a sudden, I started to cry. And she said, what's wrong? And I said, I don't know. Something is wrong with me, but I don't know. She said, meet me out at the Woodlands. And she said, and don't tell your husband. I'm going to take you out there, and I'm going to get you some, some, some medication or something like that. He don't have to know. And I said, I know I need to tell my husband, because if something happens and they need to keep me, I want my husband to know where I am. And so... I called my husband, and, and to make a long story short, we got out there and everything, and so I'm lying on the, on the bed, and so um, I look over to my, my friend, um, and, and she is, is, is a kind person. She's a counselor out in the woodlands, and, and she is one with, 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 with uh, soft words, and, and so she, she, I looked at her, and she rubbed me. She said, and I looked at her as, as, as though I was about to say, can you help me? And she looked like, and there's nothing I can do, but she touched me, and she said, you're going to be okay. And so then I looked at my husband. And so I said, I know he got some medication for me. I know there's something that he can do for me. And so uh, and I looked at him, and he looked so helpless. He looked like, there's nothing that I can do for you. 
And so I laid on that bed, and as I laid on that bed and I began to lay back, I looked at the doctor on my right. And he looked at me, and he began to hook me up with all this stuff. And so I looked up, and at this time, let me tell you something, church. I knew I was in trouble. I said, something wrong with me. I said, I'm in this room, but look like my body is floating somewhere. Look like I'm out of mind and I'm out of body. And so, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but I, I raised my head back, and as I laid there, the only thing that I could say is, Lord, help me. And the Lord, as I looked up, I done looked to my left to where my husband and Donna is, and I done looked over here to the right where the physician is standing that's tending to me. And so now I look up. He said, oh, yeah, I'm the great physician. He said, I'm the one that you're going to come through. You can't come through your husband. You can't come through Donna and the physician that's standing next to you. You can't come through him. You got to come through the most high God. And so I began to just cry out. And, and then Donna at this time, she said, asked the doctor, she said, can we just stay here with her? He said, as long as you're quiet, it's okay. And tears begin to flow down my face. So I knew at this time, the only thing I had was the most high God. We have talked about and explained the necessities of why we pray. But it behooves all of us to always remember that the essence of prayer requires faith. Faith, believing and trusting that God answers prayers in and how and what time he knows best. That's why we have faith. See, faith is knowing that Jesus he died on the cross and that he rose and that he resurrected. And when he resurrected, he declared us just and righteous. But now this is the catch. After all of that, you have to accept that I'm going to total surrender. You got to now accept that I'm going to come out of hot and cold. The Lord, that I, I want to give all myself to you. And when I begin to pray uh, the prayer, Lord, come down from the most holy place, Lord, and enter into Carmen's old, helpless, feeble, gossiping, no good, lying. Come down into this old body, Lord, and do something, Lord, with it, Lord. And so I begin to pray that prayer. Lord, surrender me. I don't want to be lukewarm anymore. Lord, I want to give my life to you. I want to give all of myself to you. See, prayer is my daily bread. For me, prayer is wisdom and knowledge. For prayer is a vehicle that connects me with the throne of God. I am reminded of Meshach, Shadrach, and the Bendigo. They refused to bow down. You remember they refused to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar. And they were thrown into the fiery furnace. Can you imagine how hot it must have been? I think of a volcano. They were not consumed. They endured this test because of their faith. Because of their faith. God has warned us so many times of our responsibility to follow God's word. God does not beg us to do anything. To love Christ is a desire and a choice that we make. It's a choice. It's a choice for us to be obedient. D, you can start coming. It is a choice that we have to make to be obedient to our God. And so today, I want us to commit to a life of prayer, to a life of submitting. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care what it look like. I don't care if it's a child. I don't care if it's a friend. 
who has done you wrong. I don't care if it's a church member. I don't care if it's your mother. I don't care if it's your father, your sister, your brother. But let us start today of committing to a life of prayer. I surrender to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his prayer. Daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all to thee. I bow worldly pleasures all forsaken take me Jesus take me now I surrender all Trust the ever-living one that he for me will plead. I need no other evidence. Amen. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. If you want to surrender from the darkness and move into the marvelous light, pass that you stand to your feet. If you want to move out of the darkness and move into the marvelous I light. You just stand to your feet. Oh, you want 
the Lord to remove your battle. No matter what it is. Let us commit to life free of sin. Let us commit to a life free of sin. Let us totally surrender our life to Christ. Let us stop gossiping. If you need to talk about somebody, you should be praying for them. You should be uplifting them. Some might say that I'm okay. But you're not okay. That I got it all together. Me save you. And so I'm going to ask Holy the elder to come Let and, me and close us the into prayer um, this afternoon. And I'm also going to ask that I am looking for, we're looking for no prayer warriors. And if you are one who want to pray, I'm going to ask if you could meet me after service on the first, the first starting the first, second, third, fourth, fifth rows and have cards in my hand for those who want to pray. There are two ways to connect with the Most High God and that is through prayer. It's in your praise. I'm going to ask if you are one who want to pray. You want to get up with us at 6 o'clock in the morning. I want you to come down. If you're willing to get up in the morning at 6 o'clock a.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's the days that we pray. If you say yes to that calling. Just meet us down here. If you are wanting to get up in the morning at 6 o'clock a.m. to pray with us, come please. And I know some might be at work or you are on your work at that time. You're on your, your way to work at that time. If you have a desire, come down. If you have a desire to pray early in the morning. If you have a desire, come down. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, we are thankful for today. Yes, Lord. You have come down from heaven in a mighty way this morning. Yes, Lord. So indeed, Father, we are thankful this morning. Yes. For many of us, we have carried fleas of gossip, yes. fleas of... Oh, Lord, I can't even say it. But we are carrying something. Yes. Something which has held us from your throne. Something even the evil one has encouraged us yes. to stay in that path. Yes. Oh, we are thankful for Sister Carmen this morning. Yes. For coming down to Katie and reminding us to turn our ways and to head on to the throne. Yes. Oh, you have been waiting for years, opening your arms and saying, come, yes. come, my yes. children, come. Yes, Lord. But we have stumbled, we have looked back, we have looked aside. It's time, it's time yes. we we'll look to you. Yes, as we look in your hands with the holes of nails, as you're crying for us, pleading, yes, say Lord. time is coming to an end. Yes. The angels are impatient, they are asking, can we go now? But you are waiting for me. You are waiting for us to make that step, to make that stand. Yes, Lord. Or oh, we have looked at others. We have looked at our friends. We are embarrassed to stand for you. We are embarrassed to come to you. Yes, Lord. But you are pleading. It's not going to be too long. Hallelujah. It's Hallelujah. not going to be too long. And you remind us yes. when Michael stands up. 
it's over. Yes. Father, we don't know our tomorrow. We don't know where we're going to lie next. But if we have to lie, it's our prayer we lie in you. So we are pleading with you, heaven. We are pleading that you be with us. And I thank you for what you have done. Reminding us to always look back, to see your hand of mercy, to see your hand of grace. Oh, we are thankful, Father. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for the privilege to be called your sons and daughters. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for all the providence in our lives. And we are sorry. Maybe we're not thankful enough. We are sorry we never prayed enough. We are sorry we never praised enough. But you have reminded us in prayer, and in praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.